Hey, what's up you guys? It's Connor and today I'm going to be doing a very long overdue book review on Arcanum Unbounded by Brandon Sanderson. This is the Cosmere novella and short story bind up. I was sent this book to review a long, long time ago and I ended up just being really busy. I left the country so I never got it done, but today I'm going to be doing a review on it for you guys. So first off, if you guys don't know, Brandon Sanderson writes most of his adult fantasy books in what's called the Cosmere, which is one giant universe, and most of the adult fantasy books that he writes are set place on a planet of a different solar system each. So Elantris is in one solar system, Warbreaker's in another, the Stormlight Archives is in a third, and the Mistborn series is in a fourth. But there's some other books and some other short stories that he's written that are also in different solar systems within the same universe. So some of them are collected in here. I'm going to keep this review spoiler free so you don't have to worry about me spoiling any of the things from any of the Cosmere books or anything like that. And the way that I'm going to do this review is I'm going to go through each story and give you my rating for it and also tell you where and at what point you should read each story so that you don't spoil yourself for stuff and it also ties everything together. So the first story that's in this book is called The Emperor's Soul. It's set on the same world that Elantris is set on, but you don't have to read it in any particular order. You could read The Emperor's Soul tomorrow and you'd be perfectly fine. It would not spoil anything. It's also my favorite novella that I've ever read, ever. I own a hardcover copy of it just by itself. I love it so much. Elantris and the Emperor Soul are set in the solar system of Selish and on the planet people are able to use different symbols to channel magic practically. And so in the Emperor Soul, this woman who gets captured for being a fraud and everything like that, she's forced to rewrite a human's soul which is not supposed to be done and it's super super dangerous because the emperor has become a vegetable and so now the main character has to try to learn about the emperor as much as she can in order to save him and by doing that save herself if you have not read that one i definitely definitely recommend it five stars check it out the second story that's in here is also in the Celish solar system and it's told during the time that Elantris takes place and so you don't want to read that one until you've finished Elantris because it'll spoil some things that happen in Elantris. But after you finish Elantris and you have some more questions about some of the things that were happening in the background, you should check out the hope for Elantris and learn a little bit more about what was happening during the main event of Elantris. I ended up giving that short story four stars. I really enjoyed it. I didn't expect that to have been a thing I didn't even know it existed and every short story has a preface and an afterward where he talks about what went into writing that short story why he wrote that novella those kinds of things and the reason why he wrote the hope for Elantris or just mainly why he named the character in the hope for Elantris what he named her I thought that was so sweet <laughs> and so I ended up giving that one four stars and enjoyed it the next set of stories that were in this bind up were in the Skadriel system, Skadriel system, I don't know how to pronounce these words, which is where the Mistborn series takes place. The first short story that is in here is the 11th Metal, and that one can really be read at any point as well because it takes place before the first book in the Mistborn trilogy, the original trilogy, so before the Final Empire. This one shows a little bit more about Kelsier and what prompted him to start wanting to overthrow the Empire and overthrow the Lord Ruler. I ended up giving that short story four stars as well because it didn't, it wasn't very long, it didn't really add too much, but I really did enjoy it and I really liked seeing where Kelsier was in his mental state just before the beginning of the first book. The next story in here is going to be Alamancer Jack and the Pits of Atania, I think. And this one was my least favorite of this bind up. It's definitely way different in style and tone than any of the other short stories and novellas that are in this, but I did enjoy it. So I ended up giving it 3.75 or four stars or something like that. It follows this very, very pompous guy, like a celebrity in that world that embellishes on his own stories and adventures and half the things he says aren't even true at all. So I really liked seeing Alamancer Jack's perspective as well as the person who was putting together his memoir and was making comments about things being true and things being untrue. So Alamancer Jack should be read after the Alloy of Law. So you want to read the Mistborn trilogy, Alloy of Law, and then you can read Alamancer Jack because it has some spoilers to do with the magic system that you don't find out until later books. Next is The Secret History, which is the big, the big story that was included in this. This is the one that everyone was very, very excited about last year. It has spoilers all throughout all the current Mistborn books that have been published so far and so you don't want to read it until you've finished Bands of Mourning which is six books so 
get on it. But it is so worth it. And every single person I've heard talk about The Secret History is so excited about it. They love it. What it gets started for the entire Cosmere as a whole is so incredible and so exciting, basically. Like, I'm so excited for all of the rest of the Cosmere books. The Cosmere books, if you don't know, have little hints and things throughout all of them that make you realize that it's one whole universe that these people are able to jump from world to world they're called world hoppers so there's different characters that show up in every single main book within the cosmere and so there's just one universe and the secret history really brings those different places together those different solar systems all together and makes you realize where the direction of the universe may possibly be headed so i really 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 liked that one after that we get a snippet of the taladin system which is where his unpublished white sand is located. White Sand is a novel that he wrote, I don't even know how long ago, and it's never been published, but he decided to take that novel and turn it into a graphic novel, and that's what's being published now. It's called White Sand, it's the same title. I have not read White Sand yet, so I really want to get my hands on it, because the snippet that we get in this book, I really enjoyed it, and I think it has a lot of potential. I really like the magic system in that, where they control sand, and it turns different colors once its magic is used and the magic system uses water from people's bodies and there's not a lot of water because they're in the desert and stuff like that and different people have different magical abilities different strengths within using this magic system and i think that the main character not being super powerful being one of the weakest people in this magic is very interesting and i am really curious to see more about that world after that is a story from the Threnodite system, which is Shadows for Silence and a Forest of Hell. I read that short story already in the Dangerous Women anthology. That's edited by George R.R. Martin. I really like the characters of this one as well as the very dreary type of world building. There's all these rules and there's ghosts and if you break the rules then the ghosts will kill you and stuff like that. I ended up giving this one 4.5 stars. It's just a very solid written short story that gets its message across exceedingly well. After that is a story from the Dramanad system which was a very good one. I loved it. I ended up giving this one 5 stars. It's called Six of Dust. I've never read that one before. I have been meaning to read it for a while because it's been out and about. And there's a bind up of Six of Dust and a different short story that he wrote that I don't think is in the Cosmere, but I never ended up getting my hands on it. I really like that this story and this planet doesn't have any what's called shards. They're basically the magic system of the Cosmere. The shards and investiture but the planet has investiture but it doesn't have any shards so it's a very curious planet and it's also another very dark and dreary type of story and although i really hate birds this series has made me mildly very small like a grain of sand small want a bird that has magical powers that can protect me and stuff like that really really enjoyed it i really hope hope in my heart that we can learn a little bit more about the dramadad system and about the characters that are happening because i really liked them and I'm hoping possibly that they will end up in other series or in other short stories even if it's not directly in the Dramadad system I think that there's a possibility that this story is not over and I want to know what is going to happen in that and the last story that's included in this bind up is from the Rosharan system which is the Stormlight Archive series Edge Dancer has to be read after Words of Radiance which is the second book in that series and this one follows a minor character that shows up in Words of Radiance and I absolutely 100% loved it. I gave it five stars. Lyft is amazing and I want to see more of her and I'm really excited that in the afterword or the postscript that he said that Lyft is going to become a more integral part in the series as it goes on. So I just loved it. So yeah, five stars for that one. Lived. I just want to be friends with her. So that's going to be my review on Arcanum Unbounded. Just so you know what's what and where the different stories go within the Cosmere books. Overall, I ended up giving this bind up five stars because there were so many five star reads. I had a couple that were a little bit less, but overall five stars. I love Brandon Sanderson. The Cosmere is my favorite and I will read every single book or short story that is set in that universe. If you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've read some of the Cosmere books. Have you read all of them? Are you ready to pick up Arcanum Unbounded? Are you going to? Anything that has to do with Brandon Sanderson leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time.